This is going to be the first in a series of videos about creating dailies in DaVinci Resolve for Avid Media Composer. This is a workflow that I use all the time. It's not by any means the only workflow that you can use, but it's my personal favorite. I've been doing it for a number of years and I find it to be really, really rock solid as long as I follow the steps in this workflow. So here we go. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and open up my copy of DaVinci Resolve. For the purposes of this video, I'm using DaVinci Resolve 14. That being said, I've been using this workflow in Resolve since probably at least version 10 or 11, and it's continued to work. So even if you're looking at this video and you have a different version of Resolve, the workflow is essentially the same and it will it should continue to work. So here we have the Resolve uh, project manager, and I'm just gonna enter my password to see my projects. So I have a few projects that I've worked on in the past, here, you can view them either as a list or as icons, whatever you prefer. For the purposes of this, I'm gonna create a new project because I'm starting something from scratch. So I'm gonna click the new project icon. And normally what I do is I name based on the film that I'm working on, um, underscore daily. So in this case, we'll just call it um, example dailies and click create. So now it's gonna create a completely empty project for me and this is my main resolve window. Now along the bottom of the resolve window you can see that there's five different sections. There's media, edit, color, fairlight, and deliver. We're going to be using many of these today to go through the dailies process. I'm going to start off by clicking on the media tab. This is where I'm going to take the first step that I need to do which is to import my media. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use some production footage from a short film that I worked on a few years ago. I used this exact workflow on this short film when I worked on it. I've also used this workflow on lots of features and other shorts over the years, so I know that it works pretty well. So I'll just show you here what I have from the production. They've given me a hard drive with three days worth of footage on it, so they shot for three days for this short film. Inside each day there's an audio folder and then there are folders for each of the video cards that they shot. So day one they shot three cards, day two they shot four cards, and day three they shot two cards. I'm going to go through the process of importing this footage into Resolve and organizing it. This is my main Resolve window. I'm on the Media tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my Media Storage. This lists all the drives that are currently connected to my computer. I'm going to click on the drive that I was given by the production and I'm going to open it up and as you can see there are three days worth of footage. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this footage into Resolve by just dragging it down into this lower area which is called the Media Pool area and this is where Resolve will have a look at the footage and we'll find out a little bit more about it. So I'm going to start with day one. Here we have under a master, we have day one. If I open that up, as you can see, here are my three cards and also my audio folder. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to be syncing audio in Resolve. You can sync audio in Resolve, but I personally prefer to do it in Avid just because I'm a little bit more comfortable with it. So I tend to be able to do it a little bit more quickly. So for this series, what we're going to do is we're going to do a workflow where we create our dailies in Resolve, but then we do our audio syncing in Avid. So I'm not going to need this audio folder. And because I like to keep a nice tidy media pool, I'm just going to delete the folder altogether. And it says, are you sure you want to remove the bin? And I say, yes, so I don't need it. So I'm going to remove it. So now all I have is three video cards, which is perfect. And I can open up each one and here I can see all of my clips. So this is all of the stuff that they shot. Um, this is card one. I can go in and look at card two. Here's all my footage card three and so on. So as you can see in this case these are our 3D files which means they were shot on a RED camera. You can also figure out a bunch of other stuff about it. It'll show you the start and end time code, uh, the resolution. So as you can see this was all 5k, the frame rate, etc, etc. Um, you can always add more columns if you just right click anywhere along here you can find all of these different custom metadata columns. Um, but for the purposes of what we're doing right now, creating dailies, what we see now is pretty much all we're going to need. The main thing that's important to note is that this real name column is currently empty. So right now Resolve doesn't have any way to create real names for any of this footage. And real names are really, really important when you are later on in the process and you're trying to match back your low res footage to your high res footage. If you have something in the real name column, it makes it really, really easy for Resolve to communicate 
with other types of software, including Avid Media Composer, to make sure that all of the clip information is translating well back and forth. So one of the things that we want to do right from the start is make sure that we populate this column with some type of information. And the way that we can do that in Resolve, it's actually really easy because Resolve is really good at auto-generating real names for your footage. So if we go up either, you can either go up to File, uh, Project, Settings, or you can just click on the gear in the bottom right of the Resolve window, it takes you to the same place, which is the project settings for this project. And if you go to the General Options tab, then we can see under conform options this great option here that says assist using real names from the and it offers us a few different options and these are options for ways that resolve is going to try and auto generate information for the real column so there's a few different ways that resolve is offering to do this and depending on your project you want to pick a different way so for example it can choose a real name based on the path name which is sort of the way that the footage is organized on your cards or on your hard drive. You can also have it create a real name based on a media pool folder name. So those you can actually manually generate folders in your media pool in Resolve and have it base its real names off of that. And that can be really handy if you've received a bunch of camera footage that is kind of disorganized or maybe it has missing metadata. They've shot a bunch of cards and they have duplicate card names or duplicate file names and that has the potential to get really really confusing when you're trying to differentiate all of the different clips from each other so in that case you might actually want to manually create your own real names and you can do that by creating media pool folders and using the media pool folder name as your real name generator but that's not actually the case with this footage I can see that they've labeled it pretty well they have card one two three four five six and so on I'm pretty confident that um, they manage their metadata pretty well and also because they shot on a red camera I know that red also generates a really good amount of metadata uh, in camera in order to differentiate our files. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to click embedding in the source clip file. So this is actually going to have Resolve is going to look at the metadata that's already inside the source clips based on the camera, what the camera created, and it's going to create real names for us. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click save. And now as you can see the real name column is now populated with all sorts of information. And what it's basically done in the case of these files is it's just essentially taken the file name and removed the suffix 001.r3d um, and given made that our real name, which is absolutely fine. We now have unique real names for all of our clips. Whatever you see in this real name column is going to be what appears in the tape column in Avid Media Composer once you import your clips into Avid. And the tape column is one of Avid's best and most rock solid metadata columns and it's really really handy avid uses it for a lot of different processes in order to maintain its clip structure in order to relink files and all that kind of stuff so having something in the tape column in avid is really really helpful and i know that whatever i put in the real name column here will show up in the tape column so that's great also, because I made the changes to the settings file for the entire project, the real name is going to be populated in every video card and every file that I now import into this project. So right now we're in card two, but if I look in card one, I've also got real names now. If I look in card three, I've got real names and so on. So now I can be pretty confident that all of my metadata is pretty well organized and I can move on to the next step, which will be creating and managing the export timelines in Resolve, and that will be in my next video.